crime lovers, to another episode of the history of the American Mafia. The true story of the American Mafia, which has been adapted to podcasts by Fabio Fabiano and I, Grace Cardlisi, have decided to translate these stories and make them accessible to all you crime lovers around the world. I hope you enjoy this new episode. Today we're going to talk about the Secret Service's investigations. In the summer of 1909, the Secret Services received complaints from banks and shop owners for the large amount of counterfeit currency going around. Initially, their investigations didn't lead to anything concrete. A turning point came when William Flynn went to Pittston in Pennsylvania to investigate. It was a very dirty and violent coal city. There were many Italian immigrants there, and the flow of counterfeit money was substantial. The investigator's diligent activity was rewarded, and a Sicilian, Mr. Sam Locino, was identified. He was to be discovered a person of dubious reputation, and was placed under surveillance. As soon as there was evidence that Sam was in possession of counterfeit banknotes, the investigators broke into his home and he was caught with his hands in the cookie jar. The agent's suspicions in fact became a reality and they had overwhelming evidence against him. If that is, he was to be brought to court. In fact, he was found in possession of a good quantity of fake dollars. At that point, he was arrested and placed in a cell, awaiting for a trial. Locino was a smart guy who didn't intend to stay in that cell. Flynn understood that the Sicilian thug could be useful in uncovering the secrets of the criminal organization behind the counterfeiting of fake dollars. He went easy on him, promised he would never have to testify before a court and that his name would never be given to the press. Therefore, after considerable pressure and assurances for his safety, Locino decided to cooperate. At that point, the dealer of counterfeit banknotes was persuaded to empty the sack. The first name that came out of his mouth was Boscarini, a medium-height man, grey hair, around 50 years old, and originally from Corleone, but living in New York. The Secret Service agents immediately believed the informant's words because they fitted perfectly with the criminal needs of the head of the first Mafia family in New York, that is, Giuseppe Morello. Morello chose his men among the immigrants from Corleone, his own town of origin. The investigators asked Locino to write a letter to Boscarini. So the New York drug dealer would have to go to the post office and pick it up. Therefore, he would be identified by the secret agents. Everything went as planned, and Boscarini was identified within a few days. The counterfeit banknote dealer replied and sent a letter in return, signed with a fake name. In the envelope, there were two counterfeit banknotes, a $2 bill, and a $5 bill. This operation gave the head of New York intelligence sufficient evidence to arrest and have Boscarini convicted. But despite the ingenious move, the head of New York Secret Services didn't arrest the drug dealer. His ultimate goal was much more ambitious. He wanted to get his hands on the whole Morello gang. The agent devised a very effective plan he gave the infiltrator several dollars with which he was to buy the counterfeit banknotes. The investigator marked the original banknotes so once they could be recognised as those used for the purchase of counterfeit dollars. Boscarini, after receiving the original dollars at the post office, was followed to New York by the agents. He was seen entering a wholesale grocery store on 236 97th Street, previously owned by Lupo, now owned by Domenico Milone and Luciano Maddi. 
This was the first link the agency established between the counterfeit banknotes and the involvement of the Morello gang. The agents began the surveillance of that grocery store, noting everyone who entered. In order not to be discovered, the agents rented an apartment in front of the entrance of the commercial establishment, where they began their observation activity. They took note of all those who entered and left the store. Amongst the names that came up, other than Boscarini, they identified Chicala, Morello and Lupo. As a result of the investigative activity, the men of the agency discovered a dense network of counterfeit banknote dealers that extended to many high-populated cities in the United States. With the presence of Italian immigrants and, in particular, Chicago and New Orleans. The traffic was directed by Chicala, and everything was organized so that the counterfeit banknotes passed through three hands before being sold. With this expedient, the system ensured that whoever was at the top of the organization could not be known by those who traded the banknotes. That way, the bosses would never get involved if agents framed one of the dealers. Chicala, on behalf of the criminal organization, putting himself at risk, went around the cities of the United States and created groups of criminals involved in the sale of counterfeit banknotes. The Sicilian warned his men, informing them and threatening them, that if they were arrested and they talked to the police, not only them, but also their families would pay. In any case, the dealers had no idea who was at the head of the organization and therefore could never be implicated. Lupo and Morello managed the entire traffic and moved their men like puppets on strings. The proceeds from printing and selling fake dollars would certainly have greatly enriched the two mafia leaders who, with that dirty money, would have solved the financial problems of their company the Ignazio Florio Corporation. It was Lupo in the end who gave relevant evidence against the leaders of Cosa Nostra in New York. He had disappeared from New York since his grocery business went bankrupt, but he had been followed. Although it wasn't easy to follow the Sicilian criminal, he moved cautiously and often managed to lose his tracks. Once the location of the Highland had been identified, the law enforcement officers began to ask the inhabitants questions and also managed to locate the Chicala farm where the counterfeiters printed the counterfeit notes. The director of the local post office confirmed to the investigators that Chicala often went there to collect packages and he was in the company of China. The relations between China and his brother-in-law Vincenzo Giglio were also confirmed. At that point, the agency was in possession of sufficient evidence to be able to affirm that the source of the counterfeit banknotes was indeed the Morello Gang. <laughs>